Welcome to Rome. We absolutely love Rome and these are a few of our favourite places. Places to eat, place to stay and a few that you won't really have seen that are just unbelievable. So stick with me on this video and I'll show you everything I know. <laughs> Rome's transport network is more than adequate. You've got a choice of trams, trains, buses and taxis. Now the airport itself is very modern, very fast. Fimincino is where we flew into. It's a great airport. We took the taxi because it's got a fixed price. And we're off. We've been picked up, transfer from the airport. We always take the taxi because it's a fixed price of 48 euros from the airport at Fimincino straight into the centre of Rome, anywhere within the city walls. It's a great price, better than the train, the bus, the tram and it's far easier. I know it takes all the stress out of your trip. The driver will take you in, he's got his Google Maps on to avoid the traffic yeah. and he takes you past some of these beautiful iconic sites on your way to, to your hotel. This one here is the Army Museum, it's a great visit if you want to go and have a look. There's some beautiful buildings on the way in. The cars that the taxis use are all generally Mercedes, pretty new, really good condition. Once you get into the centre, the taxis all change to Toyota Priuses, which is no surprise. Which takes us nicely to our hotel. And this is a great find, a really good place to stay. The Anglo Americano Hotel, it has the best location in Rome. Right in the Parliament District, at the top of the road there, takes you to the Colosseum, and down the hill to the bottom there, Spanish Steps. Everything is within walking distance. It's a lovely hotel. We stay bread and breakfast for three people sharing 160 euros a night. Now we'll always try and stay on the third floor or above because the views are absolutely fantastic. The rooms are more than adequate. And as you look out the back window, you've got the view of the National Gallery of Ancient Art. We're quite lucky that the hotel we've got is just behind me there. And it's really, really central. It's a great location, right next door to this art gallery, which is a stunning place. But on every, every corner you come to, you take a turn and there's just another gem, a, a building, a sculpture. It's just amazing. The city is incredible. One of my absolute favourite restaurants in Rome, Eno Tech Barberini on the Colonna. It's a, it's a cracking little wine bar and restaurant, live music playing, really lovely atmosphere and the food is all spectacular all made from scratch on the premises we we had many meals there and it's absolutely delightful and the prices are not too much <laughs> nice. oh heavenly porchetta now there's only one place to try this and that is barretta on the parione this place is just amazing it's all home made it's just so nice and he gives you little samples to try cuts it in front of you the spices the delicate spices in his pork in his pork is just so oh just melts in your mouth the baguettes you get from this place six euros each um, they're just unbelievable sun-dried tomatoes rocket lettuce a bit of balsamic vinegar oh look at them this was our favorite favorite eating place it is just delightful i can't tell you how good they are mm, really? 
Beautiful. As many other places to try. This was a local delicatessen. Again, five euros, get yourself a tub of pochetta and you can just mm. eat it as you're walking round. Mm. It's nice, but not as good as the other. Pochetta. Mm. There's a bit of a myth that you can't get reasonably priced food near the Colosseum. Now, this visitor's centre, which is right outside where you meet to go into the old monument, you can go in here and have these beautiful, oh look at them, white bread pizzas. Coffee, 17 euros. Not for the coffee. Bellissimo. For the whole lot. Obviously. On your travels, if you find yourself anywhere near the Vatican, you have got to go to Trapizio. Now this is a super, super place. 10 minute walk from the Vatican, tucked away down these beautiful, quaint little streets. It's a real place to go. It's a right find. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's got these adorable homemade, stylish, triangular white bread pizzas with gorgeous fillings. Now, you can either go in eating, like we have done, there's plenty of seating, or you can take away. The two meatballs. Now, look at them. And the chicken cacciatore. And then, this is zucchini taleggio, amatriciano, and the classic. On the side here we've got the souffles. Now these are gorgeous. These are rice cakes with mozzarella cheese melted inside with the different flavours. Look at that. Absolutely spondule. Beautiful. The souffle is a rice croquette with mozzarella cheese in the middle, deep fried, to make this beautiful crispy out texture. It's lovely, lovely. These trapezio <laughs> white breads with the different fillings you've got meatballs you can have chicken and there's just an array of fillings you can have absolutely delightful meatballs in white bread and the little rice cakes with the mozzarella i've got two different flavors three different flavors That's really nice. flavor. it's a modern classic and of course when you're in rome It'd be rude not to have a limoncello after your meal. Oh, absolutely delightful. Gelato and sorbet in Rome, it's just delightful. Our favourite is Frigidarium, which is on the Parione. All homemade, multitudes of flavours, and you're paying no more than four euros for a decent sized cone. It's an absolute bargain. Beautiful, beautiful place. Now the sorbets you can get are just to die for, they are delicious. And you can sit out on these little restaurants outside eating your sorbet with the live music going on all around you. Every, on every corner something's happening. All over the city you've got the fresh water fountains that are free to use and the water's supposed to be the best in the world. Oh, it's the best water I've ever tasted. With the architecture in Rome, you can see huge similarities between New York and London, probably just squashed up a bit. You can walk around everywhere. Well, from our central location of where we stayed in the Anglo American Hotel, from that point, you can get to everywhere within 25 minutes walking. It's it's so central and everything is all around about that area. As you walk out of our hotel and turn right, you've got the Spanish steps, you've got the Pantheon, you've got the, the Trevi Fountain, the, you've got the, the Vatican. They're all over that way, all within 25 minutes. With any of these famous landmarks, you've got to get there early if you want to avoid the crowds. The Pantheon, if you get there first thing, half past nine in the morning, it's just, there's not many there and you can get straight through it, it's amazing. Trevi Fountain, if you want a picture on your own, you've got to get there at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> With the Sistine Chapel Vatican, we use this headout.com to book queue jumping tickets, which was great because it got you straight in, well, say straight in, 40 minutes, you go to the tour guide and they just walk you through the door. Um, you've got to go downstairs as well when you're in the Vatican to see the Pope mobiles. 
the paintwork and everything, the paintings, it's just amazing. And you've got the Basilica, what a place that is, you've got to go. If you come out and you turn left, you've got the Parliament District, you've got the Coliseum. Again, using headout.com, pre-book before you leave, book your date for your queue jumping tickets. You've got to have them, otherwise you'll be queuing for hours and hours. This is the ancient city, legend has it, this is where Rome was born, where it all started. Once you've had your pizza at Trapizio, take a turn into the right and head up behind and this is where you end up, Teresa del Giannicolo. It's a stunning place, it's a lovely big, well it's the viewpoint you see over the whole of the city and it's a little gem because there's not many people up there. This was another super find, this is the National Park, it's got a beautiful boating lake with little terrapins in there, the Villa Borghese. It's a, it's a lovely park and you're going to find all the locals there. It's such a stunning place. So these, these terrapins all swim around in the lake, it's amazing. On the edge of the park you've got the views. That's it from below, you can see us up there. Saccarano del Bandiere, this is just the most amazing place as well. It's the Army Museum. Stunning architecture and the views from the top are just unbelievable. Again, it's an amazing place to visit. Go there for the views, you can see for miles all over the old Colosseum, the old city, right the way across to the Vatican. Stunning. Great time in Rome. So if there's any tips you've found in there that's helped you out, then just drop me a little thumbs up. Subscribe, thanks for watching.